But now let's jump into a little Q&A and I'll answer all your burning questions to the best of my abilities right now. So a little Q&A. Oh man, it's a lot. So Tom, Tom, Voyager. So Voyager, there is a bidding process going on right now in New York. I think it's behind closed doors. I don't know if we're going to know exactly who is the winner of uh, the bidding process, but I know that finance is in the, in the play, FTX and a couple big, big names. So we'll see who it is. I don't think we know exactly what it's going to be until the end of this month, but just know that uh, Voyager's up for grabs and we'll see exactly who it is. Maybe FTX comes up with a better, better uh, offer. Who knows? Crypto golfer, bad timing for the ETH merge with all the macro issues going on. And I got to tell you, uh, it's true. I'm sure like, I mean, with the ETH merge and everything else, the CPI numbers, I think this will calm down at some point. But again, uh, watch Michael Cohen and Ben Cohen. They got some pretty good uh, insights into those and see where we go. But you know, again, in the long run, in the long run, man, I got to tell you, between us, just between me and you, uh, I really would like them to go a full 100 basis points in September. That'd be great. Or 22nd, I believe. So if that happens, or no, it's a name is there. If that happens, uh, it's going to tank the market and it's a great buying opportunity. But then remember, for every buying opportunity, there at some point is a selling opportunity. So don't forget that. So yeah, we'll see. Golfer. How's the absolute course coming along? It's going along well. It's why my face is all red because I'm out there working in construction. So we do this uh, charity event twice a year. It's uh, to help underprivileged kids here in El Paso. And uh, I just donate my time and uh, resources and uh, also do all the marketing for it and uh, run it, pretty much do a bunch of it. But uh, yeah, that's going to take place October 1st. Uh, and it's going on just swimmingly well so far. Hello, Des. Oh, look at this, Sharky is back. Uh, thank you, Rob, making me money by tick, talking about what sweat coin. I'm super happy. Great. I'm glad it worked out for you. And like I said to everybody, I'm like, it's a, to me, I thought it was a no brainer. Cause I mean, you just, you just accumulated sweat coin and at some point you could sell it. The bigger question was, you know, how do they, how do they, uh, uh not fall victim to uh, a victim of their own success and they dole out too much. And it's a good question as far as like the economy of sweat coin. And um, we talked about in the deep dive, but just real quick, YouTube, you watch ads, advertisers pay YouTube, they pay me, YouTube gets paid. You know, they made $28.8 billion last year in ad revenue. I did not know that. So that's why they're able to do those things. And uh, if you got an app like Sweatcoin with 110 million users, that's where a lot of eyeballs are. And usually advertisers will go there. So the ad's gonna have, or the, the, ad, the app is gonna have ads probably your crypto wallet. I don't know if that'll have ads, but then you'll also got to remember that on top of that, they're going to offer dynamic NFTs. I don't think that's a big deal, but uh, exchange right on the right of the app where you can do an on and off ramp and also uh, trade cryptos. That'll be coming later. But I think it's a step in the right direction. And that's, I think, another revenue generation. So yeah, uh, let's see. David says, hello, Vanessa. <laughs> Digital cable. Uh, how low do you think we're going today? It looks like we're going to dip under 20K very soon. Yeah, maybe. Uh, there's always a buy. I think there's a pretty big buy wall around 19.6. I can't remember. But uh, I, don't, I don't see it going to 15 anytime soon. It may go there at some point, but uh, who knows? I don't know. I have no crystal ball. I just hope it does go there. That'd be awesome. Because again, two, three year time horizon for me. Yeah, okay. Money and life with Fred G. What's your Bitcoin prediction next week if the Federal Reserve adds 75 or more basis points? Does Bitcoin go up or more pain? I think it's that. And then there's also the macro story. What's going on with energy? What's going to happen with the housing market? What's going to happen with the war in Ukraine? There's, these are big questions to be answered. What's going to happen with uh, uh, the pipeline service into Germany? And, uh, you know, what's Russia going to do? I think there's so many things at play. It's hard to really... To, to, to guesstimate uh, your best one. I always hope for the best, but I prepare for the worst, meaning that I still dollar cost average. I dollar cost average a couple of days ago when we had that spike, I bought a little high, and I dollar cost average on days like the day when it's low, mostly because it's automatic and I don't even think about it. Thank you, Coinbase. And uh, I buy some Bitcoin, I buy some alts, and uh, off I go. I don't buy as much as I used to because I'm still waiting. I think they might go down a little bit lower. I could be wrong. If the Fed pivots, then of course I'm going in. I'm waiting for that moment, but 
we'll see if those, like uh, money says here, 75 basis points. I'm hoping for 100. I know people say, well, that will destroy the economy. Yeah, probably. But I have my thoughts, and I'll go into that later. Uh, St. Jude he goes, Alex came on the show. Look how that turned out. St. Jude has a great point. Mashinsky did come on the show and uh, didn't work out too great in that one. Let's hope uh, KuCoin is a little better. But yeah, going back to this one, I, I will say this. If we just would have done what we're supposed to do, don't leave anything on exchanges as much as possible, rotate things in and out, maybe take a little bit of, uh, of yield and get out of there and stop being so greedy, be okay. I got to tell you, this next bull run, there's going to be more problems. There's going to be things that are, being, that are going to come up. But if we can get through this, I mean, how much more can we get? Can things get thrown at us? And uh, I think we learned, we all learned a lesson and uh, how to manage risk. And I think that's the bigger ones. Not how much you make, how much you keep. And then uh, also shout out to J Jarky because he's always buying people uh, memberships to Dan Teaches, not Dan Teaches, but to Digital Asset News on uh, YouTube. I think it's like a couple bucks and everybody loves him. So thank you. Uh, Army, hey Rod, can we get together again to see you off at Puerto Rico? Sure. I like beer. Let's do that. I like food too. Uh, Night Quite Savage says Coinbase overturns fees. Yes, they do. However, there's two options. Uh, there's the advanced trader, and the uh, fees are much lower than what you get on just the regular Coinbase. It's a little bit more in depth, but uh, you can figure it out. You're a smart person. Everybody here is, I think. And then the next one is um, Coinbase One, where they charge you, I think it's like 29 bucks a month, and they waive all the fees of the $10,000 of your trading options. So that's still it. But even with that, even with that $20, I think you still get a better deal on uh, Coinbase Advanced Trader. Pi Hunter says, I'm in it here every day for a year. It must not like me. I like everybody, Pi. I swear to God, I, I do not remember. I, would, I think I'll remember this, uh, this avatar. Pi Hunter, that's a good one. Jarky Satoshi. Jarky's the man, yes. Just check KuCoin, it's what is showing up. Five cents, made like 60 bucks walking, can't beat that. Pretty good day, right? Bull run somewhere. <laughs> I'm broke, we're all broke. A little homage to the Georgia Muldrick, it's pretty funny. Brendan, I'm broke, sold my last coin for rent this month. Kind of glad now, getting back into it. I'm doing RSI based for fully allocation, percentage of long-term intervals. Sounds like a plan. That's just it. Have a plan, stick to that plan. Whatever it is. Gary Gensler is protecting me from sweat. And everything else is also protecting Ripple and XRP from making an enormous amount of revenue. <laughs> America. Funny banter is shilling sweat now too. Here's the thing. That's going to happen. There's going to be a lot more people talking about sweat coin. Just remember where you heard, heard it first. That's all I ask. All right. Thinking in the comment section, don't know about that, Rob. Look, I got some smart people, a lot of smart people with a lot of history. I appreciate a lot of people here. Uh, David, now all I eat are nothing burgers and ice cubes. Ah, the bear market. I'm deep underwater the cycle. We'll take years of the game back to loss. I made, I expect. Same thing with me. Look, 20, 20, 2017, I was on top of the world. 2018, 85% down. And I just said, well, I'll just stick around for a while, see what happens. And it works out. Again, like we just talked about, all these big institutions coming in. And I will warn everybody about that. Institutions, everything's it's so great. They still have to answer to their shareholders. So just remember, the institution giveth and they taketh away which means they will sell crypto, they will get out, they will do all the things. So just appreciate them while they're here to buoy the market, but expect them to sell different things as time goes on. That's as easy as that. Uh, ZZ, it was pretty easy to make Forex. The hard part was selling once you got it. And that's a great point. That's what we're gonna push through. We're gonna get rid of that stigma of not selling. We should be selling crypto to fund the lifestyle that we wanna have, whether that is Buying food, paying rent, not having to work, three jobs, and stupidness like, there's just craziness like that. Not stupidness, craziness like that. We should be using the crypto for the utility that it was built for 
And if it doesn't have the utility at this point, then maybe we sell for some profits and come back along the way. The same argument, I remember this in the 80s when people would say all the time, you got to buy American. You got to buy American cars. Buy American cars. American cars sucked back then. I will buy imports. You shouldn't do that. Da, 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 da. Make a better car. And they did. So that's all I'll say. David says, Rob, we need more hope in our lives or some of those health tips. Health tips, uh, always get your, do your, do your annual physicals and get your blood work checked up and as in-depth as possible. That's the best thing I can do and go from there. Crypto, I'm 100% calling the bottom and top retrospectively. <laughs> Give me some of that sweet, sweet copium. That's a good one. C, and this is a good point from Brian. CPI did not accelerate. It's true. It went down from last month, just higher than expected. Expected. So we expected it to go to 0 0.3, went to 0 0.6. Uh, Beardy is Dan's number three fan. I, I tend to believe that. I tend to believe that. Uh, oh, we just got up for a great Q4. I don't know. Dan, it's good news. More dip for buying. Aaron's got a great point. Uh, Bajarki says, I use KuCoin now for long. I know the reason. Vanessa Funk, thank you for clearing that out. Yes. Uh, the tech on KuCoin, I didn't know this. The tech on KuCoin definitely works. You can make lots and lots of money. They are absolutely merciless with their margin calls. However, if you don't set regular stops, you're getting wiped out. I think we can appreciate that, right? As long as they may, is that as long as they remain liquid and solvent and solvent, not insolvent, we are happy. Totoro says, uh, Rob, your green screen is going well. Yes, it's an, sometimes I get, I use the dynamic green screen with the dogs and the fans and things like that. It looks more realistic. And that's a good point. 823 Cisco says this, make KuCoin user-friendly. I know people are ticked off at, at Voyager, but you got to admit, man, it was the smoothest interface, so easy to use. God, it was easy. And uh, now it's gone. So KuCoin is not like that. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit more of a learning curve, but you can do it, and especially if you want to get those uh, sweet gems out there. Tom says, hey, Rob, hope all is well with you. Yeah, I'm doing a lot better. I had a big... I was pretty run down for, for weeks. I don't know what the heck happened. Went in, got the blood work drawn, showed some, some different uh, problems that I had. One of those being, not the, not the testosterone level, but the free testosterone. And uh, just take some supplements, DHEA and Tong Cattle E, feel fine. And then also I eliminate a lot of stress. I uh, stepped back majorly from the Amazon business, let it run an autopilot. And then uh, got a little more sun therapy, got outside. And that was it. Darth Mike, all you know about KuCoin, this is interesting. All you need to know about KuCoin is no KYC. I wonder if that's still going on. And then Army says, I day trade too. And I didn't think about this. That's a good point. I also got more ETH from my ledger for the possible hard fork. That's a, a big consideration. Uh, as ETH goes to the merge, you know, miners are going to like that too much. Maybe we fork and we have two different chains and go from there. Ethereum classic, classic. I don't know. <laughs> Props getting jacked in the juice when we get in the ch uh, channel. I was going to go on the TRT, but didn't I feel like I needed it. I'm going to have an update of, again. We'll see how it goes. But if I get on that, watch out. Oh, Army, congratulations. I'm doing my phase one physical for retirement. That is a sweet time. And you gotta, you're about to get out. Rob, thanks for advice before rate at July 1st. I actually followed now and I saved a lot of money. No, that works out. Sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. No, it's a good, I never, uh, sell in May and go away. We did a video about that in April. Very timely. Uh, buy in June and wait for the moon. Hmm. Got to remember that. <laughs> Not quite savage. Me too. Too much keto and fasting. TRT for second puberty. Yeah, maybe that was it. I was eating pretty bad for a while. Uh, no. So the question is, do you pay a separate entity to manage your real estate? Yes. Uh, do you have the day-to-day? -day? No. So for the real estate properties and things like that, we have a management company. And uh, just know they, they're going to charge you an uh, exorbitant amount, quite honestly, 20% revenue. But you don't have to deal with the day-to-day -day and the operations, thing like that. Now, if it's long-term rentals, we can handle that, me and the wife. But uh, the short-term rentals, management company, they take care of the cleaning, they take care of the fees, they take care of the questions and answers and everything else you want to know or that the people ask you. It's a pretty slick operation, but 20% isn't high. 
I think there's an opportunity there for a business. Just saying. Hell yeah. TRT, DHA, and Gonado, Relin. I have to write that down. <laughs> take take HG, HCG with TRT to keep the berries plump. Yeah. Atrophy, testicular atrophy. Where are you going to find out on a crypto channel? All right. Some won't prescribe it. Ah, okay. Rob, it will not take you years to get it all back. The, their markets move very fast. In fact, in 18 months or less, you'll be way in the green in a $5 trillion market. And that's the thing. Barton, that's a, great, that's a great comment because in this video that we're going to talk about for, the, for taking profits along the way, I'm going to use some indicators. And what I'm going to do when these indicators hit on certain points, just going to take profits. And make it, I'm going to make it as simple as I possibly can because I'm a simple person, obviously. And then when you do those things, you have to understand that I talk about the four-year cycles nonstop, right? I talk about the four-year cycles But you have to understand that when you're getting into investments, you have to at some point think to yourself, well, this might not pan out, right? Maybe 2025 in December is not the absolute top. Maybe in 2024 at the very end of the year or early 2025 will be the top. And I have to accept that. It's okay because the indicators will tell me a little bit along the way. And if I can dollar cost average in, I can use the indicators, I can dollar cost average out, and I can be a much happier person and much more sane and not freak out when there's a 10% drop in the market. Again, I could care less. I'm, I'm hoping for more. Ah, uh, MD Rowan, will you do the live on ETH merge countdown? Uh, I will not, but I will be, I'll be with the, um, the folks over at Crypto Slate on Twitter. I'll tell you all about it. So I'll put it on, follow me on Twitter. I'll tweet it out. Anderson, hi from Brazi. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> Orlando, great question. Rob, what do you expect Sweatcoin to do since we are in a bear market? And I got to tell you, quite honestly, I was... When these guys were talking to me about when they're going to launch, I'm like, I don't know, guys. But, uh, oops, wrong one. But I got to tell you, I mean, the market's down how much today? And Sweatcoin's up 601%. I mean, it's, it's a little jaded there. I mean, it's five cents. Doing pretty good. Um, but the question is, how long can that last? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. So I'm just, a, I'm just pleasantly surprised it did this well. And um, I think, I mean, some companies launch in, in dire situations. I know like Uber launched in the, uh, between 2007, 2009 during the uh, housing bubble. And that seemed to work out okay. Uh, LinkedIn, same way, and a couple of different ones. So like with Sweatcoin, I mean, it's just a, it's just a precursor maybe of what's to come or, or maybe it crashes to zero. I, I have no idea, but uh, it was very interesting that in one day you had some of the top, top tippy top exchanges listing it, and that was fast in one day. Because some things they they get they get they get rolled out very slowly, but not this one. So I don't know. I don't know. I hope it lasts for a while. Because remember, as a as an early round investor, I have a cliff of twelve months, meaning. I don't get to touch any coins for 12 months. And then from 12 months to 24 months, it's a ladder. So I'm in it for the long haul. But that made sense to me. Uh, I like that. I predict we'll be, we'll be euphoric in March 2023. I hope so. <laughs> uh Parish Parsa says, curious to know your opinion. If you had 200,000, what would you invest? How would you invest that in crypto now? Some people would say, throw it all in there and just go for it, right? Um, and that could work. A lot of, it's a funny thing. A lot of people will say these things like, I'm just going to throw it all in. And that can work. It worked for Diddy at the, the Bitcoin family. He got in, Bitcoin was $1,000 at the beginning of 2017. For me, I'm a little more cautious. Uh, I just am. And I would still dollar cost average that. That's just how it is. I think, how do I show you this the right way? Okay, this is how I do it. 
these to this MVRB Z score. What is this? Okay, it's three metrics. The market value is the blue line. The realized value is the orange line. And the Z score kind of just takes out all the, uh, the volatility and things like that. So this is what you're looking at. What, for me personally, when I take a look at this, I would dynamic DCA down here in this range. So let's just say I have a baseline. Let's say, so I have $200,000, right? Let's say that every day or every week, I'm going to spend $1,000 on Bitcoin. We'll just say, for example, right? If it stays along this line, I don't move too much. If it goes up, it's still 1,000, still 1,000, still 1,000 every week. But as it starts to move down, maybe it's 0 0.1, I start to go, okay, maybe it's 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500, and so on and so forth. So as it starts to really go down in the price, I start to buy a little bit more. And then I go, in the, and then in the exact opposite direction, I still have my baseline of whatever it is, and I go from there. Now, having said all that, what happens over here? If it loads, ha. So, ooh, this is why not the greatest one. So I have my baseline here. Maybe when I start to take a look at the at the sevens, I start to sell off. Maybe at here I sell off ten percent, and when it gets to eight, maybe twenty percent, and when it gets to eight and a half, maybe I sell thirty percent, or so on and so forth. But I just take a look and just see when is this overheated. And when is it undervalued? And just kind of go from there. I think that's part of the, 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 the way that I would take a look at it, but I wouldn't dump everything into it initially. I, I just not that person. There's other people would say that's dumb. I should just go all in right now. But what if Bitcoin does go to 15K? Who knows? No one knows. Let's see. <laughs> Four-year four TRT cycle. Hotsky says, let's go Vazel pump. Yeah. Cardano. Yeah, Army Piper says Ben's risk bubble chart will tell me to get out of the market. And that's the thing, like there's these top indicators and uh, the risk assessment tool I use from Ben's and I can't really show too much of it. Ben doesn't care that much, but uh, the people who pay for it do, so I can't, <laughs> I can't show it. And uh, we go over that briefly in the video. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm halfway done with doing it. Yes. Oh, man. Well, I lose the mod badge if I suggest psilocybin mushrooms for what ails you. I got to tell you, microdosing. I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube, but microdosing is where it's at. It is. With the occasional slip. Anderson Duralt, hi from Brazil. Hello. Oh, yeah, Taco Tuesday. These are my favorite days, especially in El Paso. Jonathan Sebastian, if it drops more fire, then great entry for a long-term call option. Okay. Scale in, sound advice, <laughs> very slowly. Send me 10 EOS and I'll send you five back. EOS, Beardy, me and you are the only ones that hold EOS, I think. Great. Greetings from Portugal. When can we transfer our sweat to centralized exchanges? So you should, be, you should have that option now. And as a matter of fact, let me see the tweet. I can't give you exact examples because I'm an American and we don't have that option yet. But this was, let me find it. What the heck is going on with this thing? Let me show you what I'm looking at because you can't see it. It makes no sense to you. Uh, this is sweat. These little listings got that. Swiss Borgs now live, great. There's a new pool and farm on ref.finance, I guess that's the essential. I don't, I've never used ref.finance. Okay, here we go. Uh, this was six hours ago. TGE time, token generation event. We're sending sweat to 13 million sweat wallets. Remember, you have to have the crypto wallet. It's not, because there's the app that's in your phone, and that's like a rewards program, essentially, and that's where you accumulate your sweat coins. But when you transfer them over, or when you get their token generation event and they transfer your sweat which is the sweat crypto, uh, that's a separate wallet. So they're doing that, they did it six hours ago. Maybe, if you notice a slight delay, it's only because the biggest airdrop in history is in progress. Tokens will be sent today. Remember only 10% unlocked, the rest unlocks over 24 months. And that's the truth. So everybody's kind of, see, you guys get at least get 10%, I don't get squat. I gotta wait at least 12 months to 24 months. All right, 
That's enough sweat talk today. Dave Ramsey wants me to deliver pizza. You know, I was always not too keen on that guy, but Graham Stephen had him on. And uh, a lot of things he says doesn't make a lot of sense. Just, just, just saying. He has no debt and he owns $600 million uh, worth of commercial real estate property. Tip of the hat to that guy. And he didn't start rich, that's for sure. <laughs> not macrodosing, microdosing, Michael dosing. <laughs> Get the token on the wall. Yes. Dave Ramsey eats beans and rice. I eat beans and rice a lot because my wife's always making it. All right, guys. I think that's it. Yeah, come up an hour. Look, great times, good times. I want to say thanks, everybody, for sticking with me for the Q&A. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. I do not care if you subscribe. It's not like YouTube's going to notify you anyhow. Just come back tomorrow. But what really helps is that for some reason is that like. I don't understand what the big deal about that is, but something with the algorithm. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.